If you've been wondering if you should try out Webflow, I'm here to say that yes, you're missing out. It makes customizing websites so much easier than the alternatives. I've tried every website builder under the sun, Squarespace, WordPress, Wix, coding by hand, all of it. And the best option out there right now is definitely Webflow. So today I'm gonna walk you through the interface so you can get started creating your own websites. My name's Andrea Epi. I've been a UX designer in the tech industry for seven years, and I make videos about design, tech, and productivity. I've designed plenty of websites and apps, and a few months ago I switched my personal website from Squarespace to Webflow, and I love it, and I have a lot to share with you, so let's get started. So the main selling point for Webflow is that it's no code, so you don't have to know how to code to build great websites. So it basically lets you drag and drop elements onto the canvas and style the CSS properties of those elements. And you can manipulate any item on a page however you want. While it does give you a lot of customization, it's not like Sketcher XD where you can just freely draw on the canvas. You do have to follow some coding rules like structuring things correctly. So it definitely leans more towards development than design. And because of that, the learning curve is a little bit steeper than say like Squarespace, because while you're learning the Webflow interface, you're also gonna be learning a little bit of basic code. So CSS and HTML. But I do think that's a good thing to learn, but it's just gonna take you a little bit longer because it's not as simple as just like slapping on a template and being done. So overall, I would say that Webflow is a good mix of both customizability, but also not having to mess with the code. It kind of keeps you on the right path by giving you error messages if you do something that you can't do code-wise like putting a container within another container, but it still does give you the flexibility of being able to arrange things how you want. So next, let's talk about how to actually use Webflow. So once you've made an account and you've added your domain, this is where you'll see all of your projects here, and this is where you can create each new website. And on that note, Webflow does not offer domain hosting, so you will need to buy your own domain from like Namecheap or GoDaddy, and then connect it to Webflow. When you create your first project in Webflow, the interface is a bit complex and overwhelming at first. It's a bit like Photoshop, but for developers. But that does make website building a little bit easier in the fact that you're not coding from scratch and you've got the guidelines here and it helps you follow basic front end rules. So you can't just draw a shape on the canvas like you would in Sketch, but that does keep the code clean. So best practice is to first use a design app like XD or Sketch and then bring it into Webflow. So all websites are basically made up of boxes within boxes. So we can just add some boxes by dragging and dropping these from the left side, which is our assets panel, into the center canvas. So the biggest boxes are sections, which are grouping together related content on the page, and then you've got containers, which are inside of sections, and those keep the content centered and make sure that things don't get too wide. So for instance, if you have a big widescreen monitor, you're not like looking back and forth too much. And then the smallest and most basic boxes are called div boxes, which are inside of containers and those group together related content. But before we get too far into adding too many elements on our page, a good way to start is by adding a style guide. So first we're gonna drag all of our main elements that you might need onto the canvas. And this way you can also visually see just like how things kind of look together. So we're gonna drag an H1, H2, H3, a paragraph, a button, and a text link onto the canvas and start styling those. And if you place something wrong on the canvas, you can always come over here on the left side, which is the navigator, and drag that element up or down in this list, and it'll also get rearranged on the canvas too. So it's kind of like layers panel in Photoshop. Now to style the elements in our style guide, you can give each one a class by coming over here to the right panel and creating a new tag name under selector. Then below, you can just adjust some things like color, positioning, font, border radius, things like that. So this way, if you want to reuse a style, you can just select your element, search for the class in the selector search bar, click it, and it will apply the same style as before. And then any change you make to one class affects all the others with that class as well. 
And generally you wanna to try to reuse the same classes instead of creating new ones for every element, just like you would in a design system. You can also create combo classes by adding two classes. So maybe you have a button and you want one to be inverted in color, so just add some blue text and we can make that button blue while the other one stays white since you're overriding the styles of the original one. But any changes that we do make to the white button will affect the blue button. So what we're doing with these classes is we're editing the CSS. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. And something you want to do while you're building is to make sure that you're styling the higher level elements first, like your body tag, your H1, H2, H3, um, so it will cascade down to all of the rest of the elements inside that body tag. So that way you don't have to add or change a font for every single element. Now we'll look at positioning. So if you've used any design tool, you're used to just kind of dragging elements around on the canvas. But like I mentioned, that doesn't work with Webflow. So you do have to position elements individually with coding rules here. So we can position elements with the layout panel over here with any of these positioning options. So we've got block, flexible, grid, inline block, inline, and none. And I won't dig into these too much because it is a lot to explain, but try them out and see what happens. And then to add some paddings around the sides of each element, you would come over here to the spacing area and set your paddings or your margin. So padding is the space within the box and margin is the space outside of the box. You can also set a certain width so that if you have a super wide monitor, it doesn't go all the way across the screen and you don't have to keep looking back and forth for that. So it just will stay in the middle. So for that, you would come over here and add a container. And on the right, you would set it to 1000 pixel width. So it won't go any wider than that. Or you could just click the icon margin auto in the spacing section and that'll auto add uh, spacing to the left and the right of an element. So that is positioning. And then when you have a few items placed on your canvas and you wanna actually preview your project to see how it would actually look when you publish, just click this eye icon in the top left and then publish is on the right here when you want the changes to go live. And then you've got your responsive settings in the top middle here. So you can see what your design looks like on desktop, tablet, and phone. And the different breakpoints obviously might have different designs. So for instance, on a phone, you might have less columns in a grid or a smaller font. And one thing to keep in mind is that any style change that you make on the largest breakpoint will carry down to the smaller sizes. So it cascades down. So the changes here you make on the smaller breakpoints though won't affect your larger breakpoints. So it goes down, but not up. And you can also just drag the sides with these little handles here. And then you can also add interactions over here on the right. You can create custom CSS transitions and JavaScript animations based on the element state. And another thing I wanna mention that's super useful in Webflow is CMS, but I won't cover it really in this video because it's a bit much to explain. But basically it means that you can host your own blog or articles or have categories of things that you can manage from this section. So you can create a collection here, which can be whatever you want, like articles or products or your design projects, whatever you want. And I will say that Webflow CMS is very good compared to what I've tried on other platforms. You can do a lot of customizing directly to the content very easily without worrying about breaking any of the code. And then if you wanna get more on the back end of your website to see project settings, you can come up here to your W icon, which is the menu bar in the top left, click that, then click project settings. So here is where you've got things like your hosting tab, your general tab, you can add custom fonts, connect Google Analytics, and things like that. So that's an overview of the Webflow interface and all you need to get started creating your own website. And if you wanna learn more, the great thing about Webflow is that there's tons of fantastic resources out there to do so. One that I highly recommend is Webflow University, which is Webflow's tutorials on their own site. 
and the guy that uh, hosts the tutorials is funny, so it makes learning a little bit more enjoyable. I also recommend that instead of just starting from scratch right off the bat, to try editing templates from others so you can learn how they build certain things. So you can just go to Webflow, go to Resources, Templates, and then at the top, click the free tab. So you can use uh, free templates, just click use for free, and it'll ask what you wanna save the site name as, and it will clone it. So this is great to see how someone built a specific part of their site. You can also check out the Webflow Showcase, which are sites made by the community. So to do that, just go to Webflow, Showcase, sort by clonable, and then you can clone and open those to see the back end to see how they built it. So to do that, just click View Project, open that in Webflow, and clone the project. So overall, I would definitely recommend trying Webflow if you're on the fence. I recommend just jumping in, watching some tutorials online, and you'll be up and running soon. So that's an introductory walk through the interface, and if you have any questions, just leave them down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!